Welcome to this quick start tutorial for Phoenix FD for Maya. In this video, we look at how geometry objects can be used as solid and non-solid bodies within simulations to control the interactions with objects in our scene, like a spaceship crashing into the ocean. Now we'll start with a blank scene and create a sphere. We can scale it up to make it easier to see and work with, but the exact size is not crucial. With the sphere still selected, click the large scale smoke preset from the Phoenix FD shelf. In the attribute editor, Open the grid rollout to adjust the sim's resolution and increase the cell scale to around 0.6. Disable the adaptive grid option, then set the X size to 20, the Y size to 60, and the Z size to 60. I'll move the camera so we can get a more straight on look at our volume. In the dynamics rollout, let's change steps per frame to one to also help with faster feedback at this point. Now create a cube, scale it up, and place it above the sphere and slightly off to the side, like this. Increase the end time playback range by adding a zero to the end, so we have more frames to play with. Let's start the simulation. Now, in order to better see how the smoke interacts with the scene, expand the preview rollout and then the GPU shade preview subsection. Uncheck enable. Then scroll back up to the top of the preview section and set draw just a slice to a long X axis. Now we can clearly see the smoke collides with the box and goes around it. And we didn't even have to do anything special to make this happen. That's because by default, meshes are treated by Phoenix FD as what is called solid objects, which means the object becomes an obstacle to the fluid's motion. A quick side note, make sure any mesh you want to use in your sim is closed. Don't use planes or flat sheets of geometry. If you need to use flat geometry, you'll need to make sure there's a small amount of thickness so it can properly calculate within the sim. Change your view to wireframe mode. The inside of the object is empty and the smoke goes around it in the volume. Let's select the cube from the attribute editor and the shape node tab. Make sure the Phoenix FD node properties are enabled. Expand the extra Phoenix FD attributes rollout and you'll see there's a checkbox labeled solid. This makes the mesh a solid object by default. Turning it off and the smoke will pass right through the box. Now this object is a non-solid, which means it is part of the simulation, but won't interact with it. There's another way to make objects not interact with the simulation, which offers different results. Through the simulation's scene interaction rollout, the interaction set can be used to determine which objects should interact with the sim. If exclude list is enabled, then the set is used to determine which object will not interact with the fluid in the sim at all. The difference between a non-solid object, like we have right now, and making an object excluded from the scene interaction section is that a non-solid object can still be used as an emitter, or by forces, or as a render cutter, or a birth volume. Again, objects in the exclusion list will not interact at all with the simulation. Now we'll make the smoke inside the non-solid box disappear. Select the cube again from the extra Phoenix FD attributes rollout. Enable the clear inside option. The clear channels attribute text box lists the different channels of the sim that are affected. You can edit this list to control what is cleared inside like this. The difference between the solid object that we had before and this non-solid with clear inside is that the fluid moves around solids but passes right through the non-solids. This way, you can use non-solids with clear inside to erase smoke, temperature, liquid, or different particles from different areas of the simulator without affecting the fluid's behavior. Okay, it's time to create a second cube. Let's scale it up and move it up and off to the other side above the sphere. Notice how the smoke from the simulation has been trapped inside the object. When creating or moving a solid object inside a fire smoke simulation volume, it can trap fluid channels inside of it, but that does not apply to liquid simulators. Moving this object around some more, you can see that the smoke trapped inside the volume earlier is still stuck, and even more is captured. Again, that's because by default, all objects are treated as solid objects, so the smoke cannot escape its virtual prison. But if we open the extra Phoenix FD attributes for this new cube and turn on clear inside, the smoke vanishes from inside the box faster than a Vegas magician. Finally, select the first cube and disable the clear inside attribute so the smoke goes right through it. 
Now the box on the left is a solid object, and the box on the right is a non-solid object. Look what happens when I move the first cube down and around. Yep, that's right, absolutely nothing. But if I move the solid object box on the left, it affects the smoke in the simulation. You can see right here how the smoke gets pushed around. You can also control how strongly a moving solid affects the simulation. Again, from its Phoenix FD attributes, using the motion velocity effect attribute. Now let's take some of the concepts we've just learned about and apply them to a practical scene. Let's pretend we're technical animators, hired to work on this shot of a spaceship crashing into the ocean. We need to add great looking effects to this shot, with foam and splashes, by using solids, and the motion velocity effect attribute, all while not changing the timing or work done by others in the pipeline. Here's our ship in the ocean. This geometry plane was used by the animator to block in the ship's impact. So we're going to hide it now and create a Phoenix ocean. I'll select my ship and click the ocean preset button from the shelf. Let's move the volume forward so the ship stays inside of it. From the volume's grid rollout, change the X and Z size to about 250 and the Y size to about 100. I'll adjust the volume's position a little more. Then to keep the test sims light, we want the total cells amount to be around 500,000 for this scene and its setup. So we'll increase the cell size to about 475. I'll check the volume's placement from a couple different angles. Now, because the size of the scene and the ship model is smaller than what the ocean preset expects, we need to change our unit scale to 0 0.04. Okay, now I'm gonna start the simulation just long enough for the fluid preview to appear in my viewport. Then I'll stop the sim. Unhide the ocean surface reference plane. Move the volume up so the ship impacts the water at the same level it was animated at. Rehide the plane and then start the sim again. I'll elapse some of the sim time and stop after the ship impacts the ocean surface. I can scrub the simulation, and when the ship crashes, it makes a pretty small splash. Not quite the dramatic effect we were hoping for. So we need to adjust the motion velocity effect setting we discussed earlier. If I select the main group of the spaceship, you'll see I don't have our extra Phoenix FD attributes. That's because we need to go into the shape node of each object that makes up our ship. Then we can add the extra attributes we need. Open the extra Phoenix FD attributes rollout and adjust the motion velocity effect to make the simulation act as if the speed of the ship is multiplied. Entering a value of five means that the ship will affect the splash as if it was moving five times faster than its animation. I'll start the sim again and elapse about seven minutes of sim time. You'll see a much bigger and more dramatic splash. Stop the sim after about frame 45 and scrub the animation a bit to study the new splash. You can see that there are some particles that are going outside of the simulator. Now, if we can help it, we don't want these splash and foam particles outside the simulator because all they're gonna do is slow down the calculations with little impact on the end result. So we're gonna go ahead and delete them. Create a cube and make it big enough to cover the area around the grid where the rogue particles are at. Make sure to overlap the grid slightly to help guarantee these particles are cleared from the sim before they leave the grid. A similar object can be created along the sides of the grid, and since we will only be deleting the foam and splash particles, the liquid of the ocean will remain unaffected. Let's add the extra Phoenix FD attributes to the cube. Entering wireframe mode again, we can make sure that it's positioned correctly. We want to uncheck the solid attribute so the box won't affect the simulation. Turn on clear inside and then type in foam comma splashes to clear only those types of particles from the sim. I'll start the sim again and elapse about 11 minutes of time so you can see that the particles that were going over the top of the simulator are killed. Depending on the location of where the ship crashes down into the water, you may need to create a kill zone for the front of the grid. Now let's prepare our scene for rendering. First, we need to make sure to adjust the render stats of any kill objects in the scene. Uncheck cast and receive shadows, primary visibility, and visible and reflections and refractions. This way the box does its job in the background and doesn't make an unwanted appearance in the renders. Let's switch to our render camera and discuss a few more rendering tips. 
we'll find a good frame that we want to test in our render. I'm going to go with something like frame 42. Select the foam object called Phoenix FD PRT Shader 1 from the outliner. Make sure the Phoenix FD Foam tab is selected and change the geometry mode to points. This will help speed up things quite a bit for our rendering. Then select the second foam object, which is actually for the splashes, and also change its mode to points. From the point rollout, change the point alpha to 0.3 and the shadow strength to 20. Again, do this for both foam objects, which makes the particles more opaque in the render and in my opinion, makes them look nicer. I'll also select the Place 3D Texture node from the Outliner, which we can see controls the ocean texture. I'll roughly reduce the scale by half, because it came in the scene much larger than it needs to be for our render. Next, let's check our render settings. For the image sampler type, we can go with either bucket or progressive. If I just want this single frame, I may use bucket, but if I'm planning on rendering an entire sequence, Progressive offers other advantages. I'll reduce my max subdivs down to four, but if you wanna keep the quality higher, feel free to increase it a bit. I'll set my noise threshold to 0.05. If I want the subdivs and threshold to be met, I can reduce the max render time to zero, so it keeps rendering until it gets there. We'll check the GI tab and make sure it's on and set to brute force and light cache. If we're happy with the results we get from our test render, we can go in and reduce the grid cell size for more resolution in our simulation. A total cells amount around 20 million should produce a nice result. Also, increasing our steps per frame will help with the believability of the simulation. But we'll leave those for later and create a test render frame first. Okay, so if after completing our test render, we see these large white areas in our render, which don't look right, here's a tip for how to fix them. I'll switch back over to our perspective camera, and from the V-Ray shelf, let's create a V-Ray plane. In the attribute editor, increase the locator scale to make it easier to see and select in our viewport. Since the plane is infinitely big, the actual scale doesn't matter. Now, right-click on the plane and choose Assign New Material, and then choose V-Ray MTL from the material list. All we need to do is change the diffuse color to black, and we're set. Go back to the render camera and create another test. After it's done, we should have something that looks like this. The volume is still low res, but we don't have the refraction issues from before. Let's take a look at an example animation from the time range. Thank you for joining us for this quick start video on solid and non-solid object interactions using Phoenix FD for Maya.